Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. Today I have St. Patrick's Day tear tray DIY ideas for you. And I don't only have one St. Patrick's Day tear tray, I have five different tear trays today, each with a little bit of a different theme. The first one is going to be Lucky Greens. This is going to be like a greenery themed tear tray, and I just made this tear tray for my kitchen for St. Patrick's Day. This is the tear tray that we're going to decorate. It is my white tooth tear tray that I got on Amazon. And yes, it is in my shop below. Now I told you it was going to be a greenery themed tear tray. So this is some greenery that I got at Dollar Tree. I think it's really pretty. And I have it left over from another project I was using it for. I think this is gonna be perfect. It's a little bit shorter than it comes, but I think it's gonna be great for the top of my tear tray. I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around to kind of get started. I do want it to kind of hang over the sides a little bit, give a little bit of cascading vines in the design. I think that will be pretty. pretty. And then up next, I found this great little Lucky Horseshoe at Dollar Tree. It's really cute. At first, I was thinking about painting the galvanized metal on there, but then I decided against it. It's a little tricky to paint those, and I thought I just wanted a little bit of color. So I'm just going to take some of the little clover from Dollar Tree for St. Patrick's Day, and I'm just going to attach it to the galvanized metal little clover that's on there just by gluing it on just to provide a little bit of color. I like the wood, I like the metal, and I think this is gonna be a really nice piece for the top of the tear tray. And it's got a little greenery on it, so it's gonna go with our theme. And it's a nice taller piece that I can put here on the very back of my top tier, of my tier where you can see it. Very cute for St. Patrick's Day. Now the next item, I just found this in the spring section. Um, it's called a Fairy Garden Forest, but they had these in the new um, spring section at Dollar Tree with their fairy garden stuff, and I thought this would be the perfect little leprechaun house. So I'm just gonna use a little paint and kinda give it a St. Patrick's Day makeover. I'm gonna use this leaf green acrylic paint, and basically what I wanna do is just paint the little pink flowers and the leaves that are on the front of the house to kinda of give them more of a shamrock feel than a flower feel. It's already got like the, green, the greenery on the roof of the house and I think that looks really cute and I think it's just the right size for a little leprechaun to live in for my tear tray. Now the welcome is already in gold above the door but I thought it would look even more fun for St. Patrick's Day if I were to paint it gold. So I'm just taking some acrylic paint in metallic gold and nothing crazy. I'm just going over the yellow with the gold to kind of give it that gold sparkle that's fun for St. Patrick's Day. And that's pretty much it. Otherwise, I think it's perfect and it'll make a perfect piece to go over here. I'm going to kind of wrap that Dollar Tree greenery around it to kind of make it look like it's a little bit wooded and our little leprechaun can live in that cute little fairy garden house. I think that is really sweet and a fun little touch to add in, not necessarily St. Patrick's Day, but with the spring theme. And I was really excited to see Target Dollar Spot offering these little tear tray pieces individually this year. I got this for a dollar. They had them instead of the multi tray packs that they've been having the last couple years. They had them individually like this and I love it because you can pick exactly what you want. So I got this cute little leprechaun and I'm going to put him right on top. It's a nice little chunky wood sign. He's kind of perfect. I don't have to do anything to him. I just kind of have like the greenery going around him. And then this is another piece I found at the Target Dollar Spot for only a dollar, so cheaper than the Dollar Tree. A little clover patch, pot of gold, Irish kisses, like directional arrow sign, and I thought that'd be really cute as well. Mine had a little bit of a chip in it, so I'm just going to give that a quick touch up with a paint pen and this cute little sign is ready to go. So definitely check your Target Dollar Spot. 
Um, I noticed that my store, these things go fast. Everybody wants to decorate their tear trays um, for St. Patrick's Day. So for filler, I thought I would use just some of these little shamrock greenery from Dollar Tree. This one's got like the two different shades of green with a little bit of gold glitter on it. And I just pulled off the little individual clovers. And I'm just going to kind of scatter them around until the top of the tear tray is completely full. And that was a really easy design to do up top. And we're going to continue this greenery theme down on the bottom. So I have some more of this greenery that I picked up at Dollar Tree. Again, I think it's really pretty. It can be anything as long as it's green. And I'm just going to spread this one out. This is a little bit of a longer piece than I had on the top. And I just kind of wrap it around the back, bringing it around kind of in a U shape so I can kind of wrap it around the pieces that we're going to add down there to the bottom. Now this is from the Dollar Tree. I just picked this up at Dollar Tree. It is a gold glitter shamrock and look how pretty it is. I really don't have to do anything to it and I did want to add a little bit of gold. So I'm going to kind of put that right back here in the back. Let that glitter away back there. And then this is another Target Dollar Spot piece that I found for a dollar this year, 2024, at Target Dollar Spot. A little chunky pot of gold. And I'm going to kind of put that maybe back here, but a little bit to the side so you still can kind of see it. Just as another filler piece for the tear tray. Now, since we're doing greenery, I wanted to use a little bit more greenery. I found this one actually on clearance at Target. They're normally $5. They do go on sale. Just cheap greenery. It doesn't really matter what it is. It has a plain white plastic pot. And so I'm just going to give it a little touch of St. Patrick's Day by using some of the Dollar Tree of St. Patrick's Day window decals. Just a little shamrock to put on the front. Um, otherwise, I think it's perfect. Now, since it's plastic, it didn't really want to stick to it like it would if this was like a glass pot. So I am going to have to do just a very thin coat of Mod Podge on the back of the window cling to make that stick. I didn't want to do anything crazy because I do want to be able to remove that to use that greenery for other seasons as well. But another very easy DIY. And it's a nice tall piece, so we're going to put this right back here. We also have that greenery from the Dollar Tree kind of wrapped around it and it gives it a little bit more of a green touch. I love this theme for St. Patrick's Day. I think it turned out so pretty. Now the next piece I found at Dollar Tree, it's a little green truck um, with rainbows and stuff in the back. I want it to look a little bit more farmhouse and so I don't want the bright rainbow and stuff in the back. And so I'm actually going to use some of this greenery I got at the Target Dollar Spot. You get two of these together for $5. And I thought they kind of looked like clover, right? They've had these in the past at Target Dollar Spot. I always try to pick them up because they're so versatile. You can do so many different things with them. I'm just going to flip mine over and kind of sketch out how much I need. And then I can cut out like just a little... Um, half circle piece of the greenery and it, I can have like a load of shamrocks in the back of the little green truck instead of all the bright colors and stuff like that. Now if you can't find these little tiles like this at Target Dollar Spot it would be easy to do if you can find any kind of greenery with like a small leaf like this like a boxwood or something like that it's going to kind of give you the feel of shamrocks and that's what I was going for. As you can see, they have like little heart-shaped leaves, so they're not necessarily shamrocks, but they definitely give you that feel. Now, you could kind of see through it, and you could see the rainbow and all this stuff back here, all the busyness I was trying to get rid of. So I'm just going to go over all of that with some Christmas green acrylic paint. It's pretty close to the same color as the truck, but just one coat of that to mask that. So when I attach the greenery to the back of the truck, you won't be able to see that through. You'll just kind of have a green background. And check out my new heat gun. I know my last video is tell you guys my heat gun bit the dust. So I kind of upgraded to this model. And this is the first time I've used it. I will let you know what I think about it. I've been having really bad luck with my heat guns from Amazon. But this one worked great for today. And I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue this on. 
um, and kind of just mold it to fit exactly where I want it. I want it just to look like an entire truckload of shamrocks, kind of give that feel. So I'm going to go in and kind of like trim it and then glue some of the extra pieces here at the top. I'm cleaning up any excess hot glue and just kind of clean it up a little bit to get exactly the look I'm going for. But I'm glad I switched it up. I think the truck looks really cute with the greenery in the back of it. What do you guys think about this one? I really like it. So it's going to kind of be the star of the show. We're going to put it right up here in front. It goes great with the greenery theme for St. Patrick's Day for this tear tray. And of course it stands up on its own. It's a nice chunky sign from the Dollar Tree. And I think a great value for $1.25. Now the next DIY, I'm just gonna use one of these little plastic pot of gold, uh, or I guess pots <laughs> from the St. Patrick's Isle at Dollar Tree. And instead of pot of gold, I'm actually gonna do a pot of shamrocks. So again, I'm gonna be using that same piece of greenery from the Target Dollar Spot. And I'm just going to cut down like a square a little bit bigger than the um, little pot itself. Again, I want it to all be attached. I'm just going to cut off some of these excess pieces and corner pieces to make it a little bit smaller to make it fit in there. And then I'm just going to kind of bend it kind of like in a ball shape and put it down in there and just a quick easy way to make it look like a full pot of shamrocks. For St. Patrick's Day, it definitely goes with the theme. And I think it makes it look a little bit more high end than like the um, plastic gold coins and stuff like that that you can put in it. But I also have that coming in a later video too if you do want that kind of vibe for St. Patrick's Day. So we're going to put this in the front. It's a nice smaller little pot. And we can have a little pot of clover. Then for filler, again, I'm going to be using some of the Dollar Tree clover um, and just kind of scatter these around wherever I kind of have an opening or somewhere where you'd be able to kind of see one. I'm just going to lay them, kind of layering them with the greenery, like the vine greenery that I already had in there. And this was such an easy tear tray to put together. It really did not take me very much time at all. Just a few pieces from the Dollar Tree in the dollar spot, honestly. Now, for the more filler, of course, I wanted a little bit more gold. And so I picked up some of these gold coins from Dollar Tree. And we're going to kind of scatter those around as well. I thought it'd be a fun little contrast against the greenery to kind of tuck them in here and there. Since I already have a little bit of gold with that shamrock back there, you can even lay them in your greenery like that. It's a little fun touch. And I used those to fill out the bottom. And this is how it turned out. Our little greenery themed tear tray for St. Patrick's Day. I love it. Now don't go anywhere. I'm going to give you a look around. But I have four more St. Patrick's Day tear trays for you today. That was such a fun, easy tear tray to do for you guys. If you're enjoying today's video, be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Okay, the next tear tray is going to be an over the rainbow theme where I did a complete rainbow theme for my tear tray for St. Patrick's Day 
for my kitchen using that same tear tray that I got it on Amazon. Um, this is the white tear tray and this is the tear tray that I did for my kitchen last year. Okay, our first DIY. I got this great rainbow sign at the Dollar Tree. I didn't really like the non-traditional rainbow colors though. So I thought it was the perfect size for a tear tray that I could just flip it over and paint like a more traditional rainbow on the back. So I'm just removing the tag on the back and using some Goo Gone to get rid of that adhesive. And then I picked out all of the colors of the rainbow for my paint stash. And I thought we can just paint a rainbow on here. Now, this was not near as easy as I thought it was gonna be. I was like, oh, that'd be easy. You're just gonna be painting like six, you know, semicircles here. Um, I know I want purple in the middle, so I went ahead and dotted that in there. And then I'm just gonna keep moving one stripe at a time. It was a little um, challenging. Um, some of the colors didn't really wanna cover up that back a little bit. And then just trying to get everything lined up properly. But with a little bit of effort, <laughs> we do get it here. So I am just doing the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. Um, like a traditional rainbow. If you don't really care if yours are the traditional colors, you could always use the pink and purple version that's on the other side. But I thought this was already a great size. This is where my spacing got a little bit off right there, but easy fix, just add more blue. So a couple of the colors, I did have to go over a couple of coats just to get good coverage on that brown background. And I'm gonna kinda stand this up in the back of my tear tray, so I'm not real concerned with a perfect paint job on this, but it definitely looks homemade. <laughs> but I wanna do like a rainbow theme for this tear tray. I thought it'd be really cute for a St. Patrick's Day rainbows and like pots of gold. And so that's what we're gonna do. So this is our first piece, a little DIY rainbow. There's my version. There's Dollar Tree's version. I kind of like mine more. So let's go ahead and start decorating the bottom of this tear tray. This is a great size for the back because it's kind of tall. So I'm just gonna kind of stand it back there. And you know, because it's not painted perfectly, but that's okay. Now our next DIY, I'm gonna use one of these little Crocs from the Dollar Tree. They had these for Valentine's Day, but most of the stores I've noticed have just kind of moved them into like where the candles and stuff like that are. They're a great little crock for a tear tray. I'm just using some fingernail polish remover to take off the paint. And at first it makes kind of a big mess, but if you keep at it, it comes right off and then you can DIY your little crock any way you want it. I wanna make mine a little pot of gold. I thought that would be really cute for the tear tray today. So we got all of that paint off and then now I can just kind of make it cute. Now you could use like a St. Patrick's Day window decal or something like that, or you could use your Cricut. I'm just gonna use a green paint pen and try my best to just paint this on there. I'm gonna make it say pot of gold and I'm kind of doing like a Ray Dunn font. This wasn't a really fine tipped paint pen. Um, but I'm gonna give it my best shot here. So pot of gold, just something cute. I was kind of trying to stick with a lot of white colors and this like ivory crock kind of kind of goes with it. That way the rainbows will like really pop against the whites. Gonna fill it up with some of these little Dollar Tree gold coins for St. Patrick's Day. We have a little pot of gold. Could not be any easier. So this little guy is ready to go. And we're gonna put him like right in front of the rainbow here on the bottom shelf. Little pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Okay, our next find is check out this cute little jar sign I got at the Dollar Tree. It says, follow the rainbow. I love it. The colors are perfect, it's white. The only thing I thought I would update is got like the little galvanized metal um, jar topper at the like lid jar topper and I'm gonna go ahead and paint that like metallic gold I'm um, just using some metallic gold acrylic paint and whenever you're doing like the metallic paints like that you kind of have to do some thin coats and do several to get that really like metallic sheen so I'm just gonna go over it a couple times until I get really good coverage I thought that would go good with you know the pot of gold theme having the gold lid on the jar 
instead of the silver but otherwise i love it it's got a really cute rainbow on there i love the saying so it's a perfect sign for this tear tray just the right height and then it's got little um shamrocks all over it too they are glitter but they're kind of small so not a big deal and i just trimmed up the little bow there so that you could read the sign a little bit better and we're going to put this down here too kind of over here on the other side kind of in the middle so it can work as a decor piece, but also a sign. I really love how this tear tray turned out. It was so much fun to put together. Okay, our next DIY, I'm going to use one of these just uh, craft woods from the Dollar Tree. This is the house shape. And then I found some fabric. This is actually a cosmetics bag that I found at the Dollar Tree, but it's got rainbows all over it. So I grabbed it because I thought it'd be a perfect fabric to craft with. You never know where you're going to find stuff that you can craft with the Dollar Tree. I always try to check all the aisles if I have time. And so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the fabric off one side of the little cosmetics bag. And that should be plenty to cover the little house shape. And I thought we could do just a little rainbow house. Just something fun that will stand up nicely on the tear tray. And this was super easy to put together. So I'm just going to turn it over upside down, kind of lay my house on top, and then just use an ink pen to kind of trace around it so I'll know exactly where to cut out my fabric. And this fabric is kind of like a coated fabric too. It's kind of nice. Super thick though and easy to cut and doesn't fray as well. I'm just going to cut that down in the shape of a house, and then we can glue that onto the front. Basically, I'm going to let just the like rainbows on there speak for themselves. I'm not going to add anything else. I thought that might be too much. Just a little rainbow house. I thought that'd be fun for St. Patrick's Day. I'm planning on doing two tear trays for St. Patrick's Day. So this is the first one. And um, I also did two last year, which I might try to um, repost. If you haven't seen them, they were really cute. So I'm doing a rather thick layer of Mod Podge on my house. And then we can just lay that fabric down. And then I can save the other half of the bag for something else. Just kind of lining that up, laying it down flat. It was super easy to glue down. I'm going to leave like the sides of the house like exposed wood. I don't think they really need anything. Just kind of using a baby wipe to make sure it is all stuck down. And then giving it a little dry. If you get too much fabric, you can trim it up just closely to the edge. Mine was pretty good. Just got to clean up any extra Mod Podge. And how easy was that? We have a little rainbow house. It's just the right size for the bottom of this tear tray. And we're going to kind of put it here on the other side in the back next to the little rainbow that we painted. I love the shape of tear tray. I find it works out really well on my kitchen counter can fit it back in the corner it doesn't interfere with anything okay our next DIY is one of these little white ceramic plates from the Dollar Tree that has the little like picture hanger on the back and so I thought this would be a great DIY it's white and then I found this adorable rainbow sticker at the crafter square at Dollar Tree and it is like a really cool sticker like the detail on it, it almost looks like it's made out of fabric but it's just a big sticker. See how pretty that is? And I love the colors on it. And it's going to fit on here perfectly. So basically, I'm just going to stick the sticker onto that plate. I love using those plates. They have the round ones too. They are great for tear trays because they have a stand already built in. Now, I thought it was really cute, but I kind of wanted to add just a little bit of green to it since it is St. Patrick's Day and we're doing so much rainbow stuff. I do want to have a little touch of green here and there. So I thought I could just go in and like line the edges of the little plate with green. So I'm just going to grab a green paint pen and just kind of feeling the edges just work my way around. This was actually really easy and I've done that on the round ones as well. And it's just a nice way to add a little detail to these little ceramic signs and make them not quite so plain. And that's all there is to it. We have a little rainbow plate. I think it's perfect. And it's a great size where you can still see the pieces behind it. So I'm going to kind of sit it here on this side. 
It's looking cute. I'm loving the rainbows. Okay, I thought rainbows and I thought Skittles. So I got one of these little candle holders, I guess they are, from the Dollar Tree. I like the square shape. And I didn't really have a candy dish that was going to work for this tear tray. And I wanted to fill it with Skittles. So I'm just going to clean it out. And then I made the cutest printable. I'll be sure to include a link to this below. I'll post a link to my Canva. I'll also put it in um, Crafty Beach on YouTube, my group on Facebook. And you can download it there if you'd like to do the same. But I thought the Swiss expression was so cute. It says rainbow seeds. And it's for Skittles. I thought that was so funny. At first I was going to put taste the rainbow. But I thought rainbow seeds was hilarious. So I had to make one. And so I'm just going to Mod Podge that on. I cut it down. This little candle holder was like three inches by three inches. And I think I uh, made mine two and a half inches by two and a half inches. So it would fit on there nicely. And I just do a thin coat of Mod Podge laying our little rainbow seeds label on the front. I kind of wanted to do clear on this even though I'm using white ceramic for everything else because I wanted you to be able to see the Skittles like through the sides. And they're going to be very colorful. I also go over the tag with some Mod Podge on top, wiping off any excess Mod Podge that got on the glass. Super easy way to DIY that. And I really like that candle holder. It's a great shape to DIY with, and it's perfect size for a tear tray. Now, I didn't have any Skittles, so your girl had to door dash three bags of Skittles to her door. <laughs> while I was filming this video because I just did not have time to go get them. So funny. But three of the share size fills it up pretty well. And this is a great decoration for the tear tray because everybody can help themselves to some rainbow seeds. We're going to put it right here in front where people can just grab some rainbows. And I thought that was a really fun touch for this tear tray. Hey guys, we're halfway through, but I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I also have a Facebook page. I will have them both linked below. You're going to get different content on both. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle on all of those is Crafty Beach on YouTube, all one word. Okay, the next DIY is going to be really easy. I got one of these little wood bead charms from the Dollar Tree, but I don't necessarily want the wood beads on there. So I'm just going to cut them off. We can always reuse those for something else. But I thought the little pot of gold was the perfect size for a tear tray. And we can make just a simple standing sign. I'm just trying to get the staples out of the back. Not too worried that it has glitter on it. I think it's cute. It's a little pot of gold with a little glitter shamrock on it. I just need to find a way for it to stand up. And so I'm going to use some of those little tiny Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree. I'm just going to glue two together. And then glue that to the back of the little pot of gold with some hot glue. And we have a super easy a DIY here for my tear tray. And we're going to sit this kind of in front of that little rainbow plate that we made. Another little pot of gold for the end of the rainbow. Here in Florida, we have some great rainbows. A lot of times we have, we had a double rainbow the other day, a double full rainbow. It was beautiful. And it looked like the rainbow like ended at our house when we were coming home. We were like, oh, we better find a pot of gold there. <laughs> so I'm going to sit that right over here. And check out these cute little filled jars. $3 Target dollar spot. They're like the little plastic, like, pots or cauldrons like from the, that they also have at the Dollar Tree but the neat thing about these is that they're already filled so one is filled with gold coins and one is filled with little green felt shamrocks they're so cute so I thought it was a quick little time saver we can use both of these for the tear tray they're the perfect size and I've been complaining about my dollar spot at Target and they are bringing it with their Easter and spring stuff they might not have had anything for um, Valentine's Day, but man, they've got some really cute stuff. I have to stop going in there, even though it's my job to go in there, but I um, leave with something every time. <laughs> okay, I wanted to do a quick, easy sign for the top, and I picked one of these white signs from the Dollar Tree. They're kind of new there. I love those, and I thought that'd be a good background, so we're going with the white. 
And then I got some of these little shamrocks from the Dollar Tree and I thought it'd be cute to do a rainbow shamrock and just a very quick little rainbow shamrock sign. I'm gonna stand this up on the back of my top tier tray. So I'm gonna kind of put my little rainbow shamrock up high. They're really cute. They have those in like the stripes. They also have them in like a little shamrock print. Um, I did get both of them. They're just great for crafting with. And then I was going to go ahead and make it a sign just because it's kind of off centered. So I do take a green paint pen and just do like a Ray Dunn font. And I'm just going to spell out lucky, just something easy, simple for the sign. Where I'm going to put this kind of on the back. I'm not sure if you'll even be able to read it, but <laughs> I didn't want to leave it blank. So quick and easy, a little lucky, but mainly I was going for that cute little rainbow shamrock. I think it's going to go nicely with all the other rainbows. So we can start decorating the top of my tear tray. I'm going to put that in the back. Okay, check out this cute little mug that I got at the Target dollar spot. It says Happy Go Lucky. It was $3 and it has a little rainbow for a handle. The rainbow is on the back too. And the Happy Go Lucky is written in gold. And I thought we could do a cute little flower arrangement in this. I love decorating tear trays with coffee mugs, especially in the kitchen. It goes nicely. I do want to put some floral foam in there. So I just take one of these little squares from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to trim it down a little bit so it'll fit in there nicely. And we can fill this up with shamrocks. I got one of these little shamrock um, plant sprigs from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use all of it. I'm just going to go ahead, though, and use my floral scissors from the Dollar Tree to cut those all off so that we can arrange those wherever we want. So once I get those ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and just put a little reindeer moss on top of the floral foam just so you won't be able to see that foam in there just to cover that up. And then we can start filling this with shamrocks. I thought that would be a really cute touch for a little plant for a tear tray. I always like to bring in a little greenery if I can. And I'll have lots of room for these tall plants on the top of my tear tray. Super cute. That's what it looks like so far. And then I thought I could do a little rainbow pick in it, a little plant pick using another one of these little charms from the Dollar Tree. This one has rainbows on it. I'm gonna cut the beads off again like I did before, just because I just really want this cute little rainbow. And I have been hoarding rainbows for this tear tray because I thought it'd be a really fun theme. So I'm gonna use just a skewer from the Dollar Tree, kind of measuring how tall I want it. And it's super easy to just break those off with your fingers. And then I can just glue that to the back of our rainbow. Um, kind of just like on one side, so it'll kind of be at an angle. So I just use hot glue to attach that to the back. And we have a perfect little St. Patrick's Day stake for our little flower arrangement. I guess clover arrangement. Totally loving that mug. I got that as soon as I was done with my... Um, St. Patrick's Day coffee bar video that I did, but I like the fact that I saved it anyway because um, the rainbow theme goes perfectly with this one. If you haven't checked out my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar video, please do. For some reason, it's not getting the views that my coffee bars usually do, but I did do it especially for you guys because you guys requested that I do it. So I love how it turned out. So it's kind of tall, so we're gonna stand it here in the front just because the coffee mug fits there and I don't really care if there's anything behind it because I don't think you're really going to be able to see behind it. I'm going to kind of tuck it back there in the corner of my kitchen. I got this cute little rainbow last year at the Target dollar spot, but it was the perfect size and so I had to use it. Hopefully they'll bring them back again this year because they were so cute. Kind of tilting it up on the side. I thought that looked cute. And then we'll use the other little pot that we uh, unwrapped before. This time I'm going to do the little pot of gold one and do that right in front of that rainbow. Super cute. Okay, I'm now always thinking, what else does it need beads? Now I picked these up at Dollar Tree. They have a little rainbow on one end and they're multicolored. And I thought this was perfect. I don't have to do anything to this. They also have these in white and black, but I did pick up one that was rainbow. 
because I thought it would be great for a tear tray. And so this is just perfect. Not a DIY if it's good to go. Thanks, Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use a little double-sided tape just to kind of make this stay exactly where I want it. Because I want that little rainbow to kind of like be cascading over the top in front where everybody can see it and just put a, weed, a wood bead on that double-sided tape. And then I thought I would just kind of for fun just kind of string it through the coffee mug and then string that down to the bottom shelf. I was having trouble trying to get it to hang exactly like I wanted. I didn't want it to like block that happy-go-lucky on the mug. So I did use a little double-sided tape on the other side too. Kind of get it exactly where I wanted it. And then I'm just going to kind of tuck the little tassel down here in the bottom. I love it when you have a wood bead on a tear tray and they like go like multiple tiers like this. I'm just going to lay that inside there. And then for filler, we're just going to use some more of these little gold coins from the Dollar Tree for St. Patrick's Day. And just kind of anywhere that doesn't really have something, we can just toss a few of these and they're perfect for St. Patrick's Day. They go perfectly with the theme. Kind of standing them up against things like the pole in the center and stuff like that if I can. Then I'll also put some back here in my like little empty corner. <laughs> That mug barely fit on the top, but it did fit right where I had it. And this is how it turned out my rainbow themed St. Patrick's Day tear tray. Now I'm going to give you a look around on this one as well. Stick around. I still have three more St. Patrick's Day tear tray ideas for you. Isn't that such a fun theme for St. Patrick's Day? This is definitely one of my favorite tear trays. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know about memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos, and it's a quick, easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. All you have to do is hit the Join button under today's video. Okay, the next theme is going to be leprechaun gnomes. So I know we all love gnomes, but I wanted to kind of do a leprechaun version for St. Patrick's Day, and we're going to do an entire two-tier tray using my wooden tier tray. So the first thing we're going to use is some of this wired ribbon from the Dollar Tree with little shamrocks all over it. What I did was just glue it to itself by cutting off the right size and wrapping it around both tiers of my tier tray. We're going all out with this one and we're gonna start with our first gnome check out these giant gnomes they have at the Dollar Tree they are so big I used one on my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar and I just loved it so I had to get some with the little orange beards too to kind of make them look like leprechauns so I like him he's wearing like a green outfit he has this little orange beard and then he has like a green and black plaid little gnome hat I thought I would add just maybe a few details to him just to kind of give him a little bit more charm. I don't really like that seam around his hat. So I was thinking if I could use like this black leather purse from the Dollar Tree, um, I could like make like a little leprechaun hat strap. I thought that would make him kind of look a little bit more like a leprechaun. So I was going to use the strap inside, but I thought it was a little too skinny. So I'm just going to cut the purse out and cut the strap size that I want. 
And then I was trying to decide if I should use like the bumpy leather side or if I should use uh, like the sleek like suede like inside. I really like that. So I actually ended up liking that one better. So I'm actually going to do it like the leather side down. But it took me a while to determine this. <laughs> Now it's kind of an odd shape. I can't just wrap one strap all the way around just because I want it to fit closely with his little gnome hat. So I'm just going to cut it at an angle right there and then glue it to the front of his little gnome hat first. It's going to cover up that little white seam and it's just going to add another little detail. I really like homemade looking gnomes and so kind of trying to make him look a little bit more homemade. So I'm going to cut it at an angle here on the other side and finish gluing that around. So it's kind of one piece with a little gnome hat, kind of a little bit over his nose. And then I kind of want that strap to go all the way around because it is a tear tray. You are going to be able to see the back of him. And even though his hat's different in the back, it's just plain green. I thought I would just go ahead and do a strap for the back too, just to kind of make it look like it goes all the way around his hat. I just want to do like the traditional like, um, strap around the hat with like the little buckle for a leprechaun since he kind of looks like a leprechaun anyway with that bright orange beard. So I just cut that one down to size and hot glue that to the hat as well just forming two seams on the side. Now I need to make the buckle and I thought like some of this felt from the Dollar Tree would probably be the easiest option and they actually had this like orangey color but it you know, it almost looks like gold and I thought that would be cute for like a gold buckle and it would be really easy to do. So I'm just going to cut out a little piece of that Dollar Tree felt and try to see about how big it needs to be. And then once I get the rectangle cut down to size, I'm just going to fold it in half. That way I can cut out like the rectangle in the middle um, to do a really simple little buckle for him. So just folding it in half then cutting a little rectangle out of the middle. And I was going back and forth what to make this buckle out of, and I'm glad I decided with felt because it's easy, it's no fray, and it's going to go great with all the other like fabric touches on this little St. Patrick's Day gnome. We're going to do a lot of gnomes today. I know I have a lot of gnome fans out there, Crafty Beach Moms, and I am not going to disappoint today. We're going to do a lot of gnomes. Now to glue it down, I'm just using some tacky glue from the Dollar Tree. Um, just because I didn't really think it required hot glue, I thought that would be plenty to hold it on there and it worked really well. Now once I get him all on there, I'm just going to go ahead and give his little beard another little comb and a little trim because it's a little shaggy but super cute. And I think he's looking really cute. What do you guys think? I was trying to decide if he needed any more details, but I kind of like him just the way he is. So we're going to stand him up on the top of the tear tray where there's plenty of room for a big gnome like him. So I decided I kind of wanted to do all tall stuff on the top since he's really tall. So I thought I would do a, a flower arrangement, but I'm going to use one of those tall vases from the Dollar Tree. Now I thought I could use some of these little St. Patrick's Day socks to make a sleeve for my vase. I've never done this before, but in theory, I think it should work. And I found these cute little socks at the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the heel and the ankle off trying to get my line as straight as possible. It's got three little different gnomes on there and they're wearing like the same hat as the gnome that we just DIY'd, which is really cute. So then I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing by cutting the toes off and it's going to, you know, give me just like a little sleeve. I thought that'd be a really easy way to decorate this face from the Dollar Tree and it actually worked out really well. I was quite impressed. So I'm just going to slide it on kind of like a little cozy, right? Now I didn't really like um, the exposed edges, you know, I cut pretty good, but I thought it looked a little rag raggly, so I thought I would try to line that with something to kind of make it look, you know, just a little bit cleaner. So I kind of trimmed it down to size, and then I was trying to think what I could use. You could use ribbon or whatnot, but I had that black leather purse that we just used for the gnome DIY, and it has this great, like, black leather strap on it. I thought that would be the perfect touch. It's going to... Um, 
go with that little black strap that we just added to our gnome. I'm gonna use it like the suede side up again. I really like that better than the bumpy leather. Um, so I'm just gonna glue this down and just kind of make a seam all the way around. What I wanna put in there is those little shamrocks from the Dollar Tree that you see off the, to the left there. Um, and I think they're gonna fit in there really nicely. I just wanted to do a really cute St. Patrick's Day like gnome theme vase. And so I just cut that down to size and hot glue that to itself. Try not to make too much of a mess there with a hot glue. But if you do, if you use your heat gun, it's gonna save the day. <laughs> My heat gun, I got this heat gun two years ago when I started this channel and it's been through some stuff, but it still works great. It lo doesn't look great, but I have that available on my Amazon shop. It was only like $10, fantastic investment. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing at the top to seal that in. It just gives it a cleaner appearance, but I was a big fan of the sock trick. It definitely worked like I thought it would. So I cut that little purse strap down to size two and we have our little vase. Now I didn't really like the fact that it was kind of clear on the bottom. You could kind of see through it and I was trying to think of a way that I can make it green and I thought I have some green sand from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna pour that in there. If you don't have this, you're probably not gonna notice, but I had it, so I decided to pour just a little bit in the bottom of the vase. Just gonna give me something to stick the little shamrocks down into. And it's gonna add another little green touch. We are going green, St. Patrick's Day proud. You know, um, I just had a St. Patrick's Day tear trade DIY video come out the other day. My theme was rainbows. And um, totally going a different direction with this one. So there it is, just enough sand to get past um, the sock. I don't wanna waste all my green sand. And I think that looks pretty cute. So it's time to add our shamrocks. They almost fit in there just perfectly, but I wanted them to be a tiny bit shorter. Just trying to try them out for size. I um, actually am just going to cut through there. I don't actually need to cut it all the way off as long as I bend it. It's gonna be fine and just stick that down into the green sand and we have a really nice tall St. Patrick's Day DIY that we can sit on the tear tray next to that gnome and it coordinates with it so well with the little gnome wearing the same hat he's holding like um, shamrocks um, horseshoes super cute so I'm gonna kind of put him over on the side. We're gonna do like four big pieces, I think on the top is gonna to fit really well. Now this is the Mrs. We had to have a girl gnome too, right? So I got this one at Dollar Tree too, super large, loving her little orange braids. The only thing I'm not digging about this is her hat. Um, it's like really dark green, almost black like sequins. And I didn't really think that was gonna go with my vibe. So I decided I could replace her hat with some of these Dollar Tree socks. These are like the really fuzzy ones. They're white with green shamrocks and I thought that would match her little outfit well. And it's gonna kind of make her look a little bit more like a, a, a handmade like sock gnome. I love, I love making sock gnomes, they're so fun. And she kind of looks like she's homemade after all of these touches. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off the heel, just kind of like we did to make the sleeve out of the sock. And we are gonna wrap this little sock around her hat, just leaving everything on there as is. That way I'll have the nice shape for the gnome hat and I don't really have to worry about taking all of that stuff off. Now I did wanna twist it so like um, the seam for the toes like is going one direction just to kind of line it up and pull it all the way down to her nose. Now I'm just gonna start hot gluing that to her existing hat. Being careful, trying not to burn myself. I think I totally burnt myself on this one. There's always gotta be that project that gets you. <laughs> but getting it as close as I can to the um, bottom of it, um, I will go ahead and do something to seal that like raw edge from the sock. But I'm just trying to get it down as close as I can to the bottom of it. Um, and just hot gluing that all the way around. Fit on there quite nicely. 
Now right now it kind of looks like a sock. It doesn't really look like a gnome hat, but we will shape that up into a gnome hat. And so this is the ankle part of that sock that we cut off. And I'm just gonna cut off the little elastic band that would go around your ankle, mostly green. I did leave a little bit of white on there just to make it a little bit longer so that cover up um, our exposed edges there. And just cutting a loose string and we have a great little brim for her a little hat that's going to seal that in nicely i've done that before when i've made sock gnomes and it's always worked well and pull that down and see how that covers that little area perfectly kind of goes over her little plush nose a little bit and her little orange braids i kind of wish that other gnome had like the orange yarn for his beard because the orange yarn on her braids are adorable now I'm just going to do hot glue down to seal that into place. Um, to glue that down, I don't want that going anywhere and I want it to stay exactly where I want it, covering up all the stuff there that I don't want you to see. <laughs> Trying not to burn myself. Good job, Julie. Use tools, use tools, not your fingers. And then gluing that all the way down. Now once we have that part of the gnome taken care of we can start worrying about the shape it ha pretty much has the right shape but the end of it's just a little too big there so i'm going to take some twine gonna bunch it together at the end and then i'm just going to tie that twine off to give me a point to the end of my gnome hat a lot of times i like to use pom-poms and stuff on the end but i didn't really want to do a pom-pom on hers because the other gnome didn't really have that and so I'm kind of just going to kind of do the same kind of hat. So I cut off my excess twine after I cut it off. And then I'm going to cut off just the toe of the sock. And I'm going to cut that down just as close as I can get to kind of form just a perfect little tip. Of course, you can still kind of see, um, you know, where I tied it off and a little bit of exposed cutting there. But I am going to patch that. I still have that toe. Of the sock that we cut off so I have some green fabric so I just cut off some of it glued it on the end and wrap that around that's going to cover up the twine kind of give it more of a finished little point here at the end just wrapping that all the way around and hot gluing that to itself she was a really fun gnome to DIY and add some touches to I think she turned out really cute so we got that going good, just trying to make it look as much as I can, like a pointy little gnome hat. And I'm loving that hat. I think it's way cuter than the one that they had on there. Now I thought her outfit like maybe needed something. So I was trying to go through my St. Patrick's Day stash to see what I have. And I had some of these craft kits that had like leprechauns, rainbows, and such like that in there. And I thought maybe I could find something cool in here because they're like little felt pieces that we could decorate with. And I did, I found the perfect thing to kind of decorate her outfit and make her look super cute. Inside the rainbow one, there's these little tiny green shamrocks that are just the right size to decorate her buttons. They are like green glitter on one side and like green on the other. So I'm gonna take two of those and I'm just gonna simply hot glue those to the button she already has on there. It's gonna give her another little St. Patrick's Day DIY and I think it turned out really cute. A lot cuter than just the green buttons, I think. Because it's a girl now. We had to give her a pretty little outfit, you know? Now, I was trying to decide if she needed any other details. I wanted some ribbon or something to, like, trim out her sleeves. But I didn't really have anything that was, like, small enough or quite the, si quite the right size. So I do have an extra, like, St. Patrick's Day tassel from some of the wood bead um, garland that we used on my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. And... It's green and white, it's just the right size, and so I'm just gonna carefully pull that out of the tassel without trying to destroy the tassel. We can save that tassel for another project, but look, it's like a little white um, skinny ribbon with green dots on it. I think it's gonna be the perfect little touch to like kind of dress up her sleeve a little bit. So I'm just gonna cut that down to size. There's plenty for both sleeves, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut two. 
And then I'm just gonna hot glue that around the bottom of her sleeve just to kind of make her outfit look a little bit fancy because again, we're doing the girl one. And you don't always find a girl gnome. I was really happy to find her. I think she's so pretty and I love her little orange hair. <laughs> okay, we got that side glued down. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing here on the other side. And I think she's going to be ready to go. I'm going to put her on the top tier on the opposite side of our other gnome. I'm going to be using this tier tray on my kitchen table. So you're going to be able to see it from all four directions. So I want every area of the tier tray to be really decorated cute. So since she's the same size, she's going to look great behind that large gnome. And they're going to balance each other out really well. Thought about doing something different with her braids, but the little green bows on there were super cute. So I thought I would leave them as is. And I think she's ready to go. What do you guys think about her? She might need a name. She's pretty cute. And she's ready to go in here on the tear tray. We're going to put her back to back with the little guy gnome. I love her little braids. So I'm going to kind of let them like drape over the sides. And she's such a large little gnome. Now for the other side, instead of doing the flower vase, I thought we could use one of these tall candles from the Dollar Tree. So I grabbed a green one and these adorable little gnome window decals from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just peeling off that plastic that's on there. And it does leave behind like a stickiness on there. And so I thought I would use some Goo Gone to try to get that off. Now, sometimes these candles don't look great. As you can see, it's a little like blotchy, but I think it's going to be okay. You're definitely um, going to have trouble if you're going to try to find one that looks perfect. I wonder if you did a quick melt on one, um, like by putting it in boiling water, if you can make them look a little bit better. I've never tried. I have melted these though before to make my own like DIY candles. And um, so that might work actually. We're going to kind of go with it. It's a little mottled, but as long as I get all that adhesive off there, I think we can make it work. One side kind of look good. So I'm going to pick out a couple little gnomes to decorate this with. We have this little gnome that's holding like a little shamrock. It's a different color of green. So I thought that'd be a nice contrast. And since it's glass and it's a window decal, all you got to do is stick it on there. Super easy. And then we, if you want to change this candle out for a different season like Christmas, all you got to do is take the window decal off. Could not be any easier. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do one on the back. And then I thought, yes, I do want to because you're going to be able to see it from the front and the back. And so there was actually a little girl gnome on there that kind of coordinates with the one that we made. And so I thought we'd put her on the other side. And it's going to cover up a lot of that mottledness on the, the little candle as well. And she's holding a little horseshoe for luck. And I'm just going to... That's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to add that to the top. It's going to be about the same size as the vase on the other side. And then I thought I would do like the boy one next to the girl, the girl one next to the boy, just to mix it up a little bit. And it's the perfect size right there. Now I wanted to do one more small touch on the top. And I got one of these little, what are they called? This is decor, like a charm. It's a little glitter shamrock from the Dollar Tree with some white and green wood beads just going to leave it totally as is and just kind of kind of string that at the top it's going to give you that wood bead garland feel kind of in a small space okay let's get started on the bottom of this tear tray i'm going to use one of these new little wood signs from the dollar tree i love these they come in like all different finishes like white tan black I guess this really isn't tan. It's more of like a medium wood. And then another one of those craft kits from the Dollar Tree. This one had the perfect thing inside of it. It has a little leprechaun gnome. Super cute. And so that's all we're going to use to build this DIY sign. It's going to be so easy. That's the little beard piece with the little hands and feet. It comes with a little leprechaun hat um strap a nose for the gnome and a shamrock so couldn't be any easier we were just going to hot glue this on my battery was not working on my hot glue gun there so i had to switch it out real quick and see how the hat kind of covers up like the writing that's on there 
So this size, this size sign is going to be the perfect size for this. I'm trying not to use too much hot glue because I really don't need to. Just lining up the sides of the hat for our little leprechaun hat. And these are so easy and they're a great way to decorate when like a holiday like St. Patrick's Day where Dollar Tree really doesn't have a lot of craft materials available. You kind of have to get creative with what they have. But I was really impressed with these craft kits. They're really cute. So we glue down the little strap to his hat and gluing on the little gnome nose, his little orange nose. And then he can hold this little glitter shamrock in his hands. Couldn't be any easier. And we have a little leprechaun gnome sign for the bottom of the tear tray. This size, like sitting on its side like that is the perfect size for the bottom of my wood tear tray. And so let's go ahead and start on the bottom of it. We can place it right here. It's nice and tall. So I'm going to kind of put that more towards the back and we can put some shorter things in front of it. Super cute. I was going to add a word, but I didn't think you'd really be able to see it. Now the next find is from the Dollar Tree. It's this really pretty glitter shamrock. I think it's just the right size for a tear tray. And it's oh so pretty. Like it's kind of like a wood, heavy wood. And it kind of sits just on its, um, by itself. And it's got green glitter all over. And it's kind of a different shade of green. Kind of matches that lighter green color of the shamrocks and the ribbon. So we're just going to put that right in front. Okay, I promised you guys a lot of gnomes, so we're gonna do that. They had these cute little ornaments at the Dollar Tree with a green glitter gnome hat with a little orange leprechaun beard. Perfect for our theme. All I had to do was cut the ribbon off the top. I don't have to do anything to them. They don't stand by themselves too well, but if I lean these up against like signs and such in the bottom, they'll stand up perfectly. So we'll go ahead and use one now and just kind of lean it up against that little glitter shamrock. He's so cute. Perfect size for the bottom. Now the next items I found at the Target Dollar Spot for $3. So they're only a dollar a piece, so even cheaper than the Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna go ahead and use all of them for this DIY because I think they're perfect. So one like, says luck, one says shamrocks and shenanigans, and one is actually a little gnome leprechaun. Actually, I guess this one's not a leprechaun. It's just a St. Patrick's Day gnome. He's got the white beard. But I thought they were going to be perfect. What do you guys think? So let's go ahead and use our little gnome first. Kind of sit him in front of our sign. He's so cute. Don't have to do anything to him. He's perfect. Now the next find is from the Dollar Tree as well. as Almost everything's from the Dollar Tree, I think, except for those little signs. So super cute. Lots of glitter, green. It says Luck of the Irish. It's made out of like a big rock. So perfect for a tear tray, I thought. And I'm going to sit that right over here to the side. Now this item was from the Dollar Tree as well. It's a little um, leprechaun hat. It spells out luck, but I thought it was kind of hard to read. So I thought maybe we could do our own thing with this. I like the little glitter leprechaun hat. So I'm just going to take off all of the luck letters and the little stems. And I thought maybe we could do our own thing with this. It is the really good size for a tear tray. So I pull all that stuff out. I'm going to touch up the styrofoam a little bit um, with some green paint so it's not so obvious. Just touching it up a little bit. It's still going to have some holes in there, but that's okay. I'm going to kind of use it like it was used before as kind of a base, but I thought we could switch it up and use some of these little shamrock picks from the Dollar Tree. They're like green glitter, so that's going to match like the little hat perfectly. You don't have to worry about spelling out like a whole word and it's not going to be lined up right. So I'm just going to use like three of those. Just breaking the little picks off to size. They're super easy to break. And just kind of scattering those in there. Now I get the three in there and I, you can kind of still see that there are some holes in the top. There were a couple little details that came with the luck. These little pipe cleaners, like one was white and one was green. So I'm just going to kind of put those in the exposed holes. And that's all there is to it. Super easy little DIY. I think it looks cuter than when it said luck. I just thought it was a little busy. I didn't think you could really read it very much. So this one's ready to go. We're going to put it right over here. And with those picks installed, it's just the right size down here. 
And I'm, I'm digging all the glitter. Normally I don't dig the glitter, but for St. Patrick's Day, we're gonna look the other way. <laughs> now I found more gnomes. These are also ornaments from the Dollar Tree. These are a little different. Green shamrock hat with a little um, strap and buckle, kind of like what we did on the gnome at the top. It's a little higher, but that's okay. Now I was checking these out. They look pretty good. I cut the straps off, but one of the gnome noses was like, way down there and I was like wait a minute it's supposed to be like touching its hat so I'm just gonna fix that really quick easy enough just apply a little heat just enough to melt the glue they used and I'll just move it up you don't want to use too much heat when you're dealing with that Dollar Tree fabric though because it definitely melts but these have little orange beards they're super cute as well and I thought these would be great to put around the bottom of the tear tray as well so he's looking way better, I think, with his nose in the right spot. Just making sure that I cleaned up any glue. And we have two more gnomes. We're gonna go ahead and use one right now. Kind of lean him up against that little leprechaun hat because it doesn't stand too well. And then another one of those signs from the Target Dollar Spot. This time we're gonna use the little luck sign. The green, the white, and the black really goes well with my DIYs. And so I think I'm gonna kind of just sit that one right there. And a pre-made sign, you can't get any easier than that. We're gonna put the other little gnome ornament kind of leaning up against him. That's the one with the little sparkle hat. Now this is from the Dollar Tree as well. It was called an ornament too, but it's kind of big for an ornament. I guess if you were gonna do a big St. Patrick's Day tree, but basically I just cut the little ornament string off the top trying to repair any damage by kind of pushing the excess string down inside the little leprechaun hat but this is really cute really lots of glitter lots of different shades of green and it doesn't stand up too well either but it's a very lightweight foam and so we're just going to kind of lean that up against the pole the post there in the back of my tear tray and then that other sign the shamrocks and shenanigans sign from the target dollar spot I told you we were going to use all three and this one's going to go perfectly right here. And I love that saying. I have that on some Target Dollar Spot uh, mug that I used on my St. Patrick's Day coffee bar. And finally, our other little gnomes. We have four of those little gnomes there at the bottom. They fit perfectly. I always love would-be garland. I was so excited that Dollar Tree really has really started just doing these for us. It's got a little leprechaun hat that says Happy St. Patrick's Day. It's beautiful. The colors are perfect. I don't have to do anything to it. All I got to do is put it on my tray. So thank you, Dollar Tree. We used to have to like paint these on skewers. Look at all the work they're saving me. So I'm just going to do this one on the bottom since we already got some wood beads on the top and just kind of string that along. And then for a little filler, I don't have a lot of areas I need filler, but I have a couple of these little gold coins left from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna kind of scatter those around just like wherever I have any areas that don't really have anything. I think this tear tray is really fun for St. Patrick's Day and I had so much fun putting it together. I'm gonna give you a look around, but stay tuned. We still have two more St. Patrick's Day tear trays today. This was such a fun thing to do, the leprechaun gnomes. Really fun if you enjoy that. Now coming up next, we're gonna do seaside shamrocks. 
where I do a coastal version of a St. Patrick's Day cheer tray. And this is really fun to put together. To start off, we're gonna use a Dollar Tree sign. This is kind of a hanging two part uh, shamrock sign from the Dollar Tree, but I really only want the exterior sign of the cutout because I actually wanted a large piece to put on the very top of my tear tray. And I love the green, two green like whiteboard theme. I thought that looked really coastal. But since I'm gonna be putting it on my tear tray and it's actually gonna be able to be seen from both sides, I am gonna go ahead and recreate the same thing on the back. So even though it's kind of, you know, that kind of cardboard stuff that's on the back of the signs, it does soak up a lot of paint. I just go over the whole thing with ivory paint and it's okay if some of the wood shows through because I want it to look distressed anyway, but I got pretty good coverage. Then using painter's tape, I am just going to kind of recreate the boards. I don't have any quite wide enough, so I used two together to kind of give me like about the same width of one of the boards on the other side. And then we're gonna be using a couple different colors of green acrylic to paint this. This one is the emerald color, and the other color we're gonna do is Luna Moth. And it kinda of is very similar to what's going on on the other side. I got it as close as I could get it. Now using my same painter's tape, I'm gonna kind of put it on the boards that we just painted and um, so I can do another color. And again, these are the colors. That is the Target brand acrylic paint, I believe. And this is the lighter green, the Luna Moth. And I'm really trying to kind of replicate what's on the other side of the tear tray. So it's a two-sided sign, basically. I think I liked the hand-painted sign even better than the other side. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to touch it up here and there for my painter's tape. Now I wanted a little bit of definition to make it look like different boards. And so I'm just outlining the between the stripes with just a fine tip Sharpie, just to kind of make it look like there's kind of a groove there between the boards. And I really think that helped clean it up a little bit. Now I'm going for that coastal farmhouse vibe, of course. So I'm gonna distress it. I use ivory paint just in one direction, follow that up with a baby wipe. And this is what the original side looked like that I was trying to replicate. And I'm gonna distress it too, because I do want that to look a little coastal too. And if you distress any of those Dollar Tree paper signs like that, it's gonna make them look a little bit better too. Now I'm just gonna use twine here on the very bottom of the shamrock. So I have something to tie it to my tear tray. And I actually tied it to the little ring on the top of my wooden tear tray just like this and that's kind of a coastal touch too with the twine it did take me quite a bit of twine to get it to sit on there just right now the next diy was a sign i actually got at target dollar spot for a dollar a little love sign with a shamrock and i did get this at target a couple of years ago but a couple of these things might not be available but still some really cute ideas if you want to do a coastal theme now to make these coastal, I'm just using some of those little tiny starfish from, that I get on Amazon. I put one on the shamrock on one side and then repeated it on the other side. If you don't have the little starfish, you could always use the little Dollar Tree seashells too. Just anything kind of coastal that you could add to the shamrock on a little St. Patrick's Day sign like this is gonna give you a fun coastal touch because you know, your girl can make every season and every holiday coastal. Now I wanna make sure that you can see it though. So I'm gonna prop mine up with a little Jenga block from Five Below just so you can read it and it's not hidden by the sides of the tear tray. Now up next, I'm gonna use a candle holder that I'd previously painted, just a Dollar Tree candle holder that I had painted in ivory acrylic. Kinda of has like a chalky finish to it. And I found this green candle at Dollar Tree that I thought would be perfect for a St. Patrick's Day theme. Now, since I painted that candle holder ivory, it's kind of got that coastal feel, and I really like this shade of green too. I think it looks really nice. Now, to decorate it for St. Patrick's Day, I thought a fun, easy way to decorate the candle would be just to use a little window decal from Dollar Tree. I just heated up my candle with my heat gun there a little bit to melt the wax every so lightly and then just lay the decal on there kind of melting it in if you will 
So I did a shamrock on that side. I think you're gonna be able to see it from more than one side though. So I melt it again, add a little um, horseshoe here on this side, another little fun St. Patrick's Day touch. And I think this turned out really cute. It was a really fun way to decorate it. I wasn't so sure it was going to stay on and I didn't really want it to look super glossy. So I ended up going over mine with a little bit of matte Mod Podge just to make sure it was sealed on, even though it probably would have been fine just without. And then I just display that on the Dollar Tree candle holder that I had painted ivory like that. So it has that nice kind of coastal vibe to it and a fun little candle for the very top. I guess you could always put some seashells and stuff on that as well if you wanted to. Now I'm going to remake a wood bead garland that I used for Valentine's Day. And this is just a Dollar Tree wood bead garland. It's one of the longer ones with like the smaller beads. And I'm just going to remove the Valentine's Day heart and flamingo I had on there and just replace it with some of the gold coins from Dollar Tree. It's already got a tassel on the other end that I had DIY'd. And I'm going to sandwich the twine in between two of the little gold coins from the St. Patrick's Day section at Dollar Tree to give me a little gold coin would be garland. Now, the last few years, they've been having really cute would be garlands for St. Patrick's Day, so you wouldn't have to make your own. But this is an idea if you wanted to. Now to add a little green, I thought I would use some of my green ribbon from my stash. I kind of had this green pattern that I got at the Dollar Tree. I thought it was really cute. And then just kind of some brighter green plain ribbon also from the Dollar Tree. They were both too wide though, so I just cut them in half to make thinner strips so we could decorate the tassel, kind of make it look a little bit more fun for St. Patrick's Day um, since the wood beads are like all natural color. And so I just kind of feed those over my existing tassel on there. And I take some more twine and I'm going to simply kind of tie that all together, kind of wrap that around the very top of my tassel, kind of make it look like it's part of it, kind of a ribbon tassel, if you will. And I only used like one of the pieces of each. I really didn't need too much. And I just wanted a little touch of green to it. I thought the natural wood beads and the jute twine kind of looked coastal. And I just wanted a few little St. Patrick's Day touches on there as well. I got it all put together. And I think that looks really good. Since this is a nice long wood bead, I can kind of string it between multiple tiers if I wanted to. So I just kind of like let the gold coin hang off one side, have the other side kind of come down where like the green and twine tassels can sit on the next tier of the tier tray. Now let's turn this around and decorate the other side. I was decorating this for my kitchen table. So you're gonna be able to see it from both sides, which is one reason why I did the two-sided sign for the very top. Now this is another piece I found at Target Dollar Spot for $3. And again, I did not get this this year at Dollar Spot, but it's a little rainbow and I thought we could make it into a fun little pot of gold, but a coastal version. So to fill it up, I just used some polyfill to fill up the main part of the little rainbow. And then for gold, my gold is seashells. So I just I picked up a bunch of seashells that I found at the beach and we're gonna give them a little St. Patrick's Day makeover. And instead of little gold coins, we are gonna have gold seashells. So this is just some metallic gold acrylic paint that I picked up at Dollar General. It's actually a really good one. I would like to go back there and get some more of this because it works a little bit better than some of the other brands that I've tried. And I just paint over these bleached out seashells. They were really nothing special. But with some metallic gold, I think they look like a pot of gold now, right? So I'm going to go ahead and give those a quick dry and then just pile those in my little rainbow. I thought that would be a fun thing. If you can't find a little rainbow dish like this, they do have some other options. Um, this year at Dollar Tree, they have like little wood boxes with like little rainbow cutouts on the side. That would be a really cute option too. You could just paint the rainbow on the side 
and fill yours in with some gold seashells as well. If you wanted to do this with less of a coastal feel, you could always use the little gold coins from the Dollar Tree as well. But I thought this was a fun way to make a coastal version for St. Patrick's Day, my little rainbow filled with gold seashells. We're gonna set this right up here. The top tier is not too big and this is not a real big piece, so I think it's gonna fit really nicely right here. I'm gonna kind of have the wood beads kind of go over on the top on it like that. Now for the next sign, I'm just using an old sign that I got on clearance at Target Dollar Spot. It can be anything. I like these little signs that are chunky like this for tear trays. You can make them into anything you want. I just covered up like the Father's Day sentiment that was on there with some ivory paint first. And then we are gonna Mod Podge on a window decal. Sometimes I use way too much Mod Podge. And this is just a decal from the Dollar Tree of a little directional arrow sign. And it's a little big, but that's okay because I can just put it on there and cut off the excess decal at the bottom. But it says like Shamrock Hills, um, End of the Rainbow, Leprechaun Village on there. Super cute little little um, sign for a tear tray. And the ivory kind of goes with some of the um, ivory coastal vibes we were doing. I also distressed the decal after I sealed it uh, with a little bit of ivory paint just to kind of make it look a little less per perfect and more like a hand painted sign. There are so many ways that you can use decals like from the Dollar Tree. Um, instead of your Cricut or a printer, if you don't have one, to kind of make your own thing. It's super easy, and I think it turned out pretty cute. So we're going to put this up here next to our little rainbow filled with the gold seashells. And we can start working on the bottom of the tear tray. I found this great sign at Dollar Tree. I thought it looked really kind of coastal already. Because it's got like the green boards on there and it says Irish wishes and shamrock kisses. I did want to kind of distress it, kind of tone down the glitter feel on there. So I roughed mine up with a sanding block from the Dollar Tree to give it a distressed like coastal farmhouse finish and kind of tone down the glitter. And then to further tone down the glitter, I'm using matte Mod Podge to kind of seal it all over. It's gonna give it more of a board texture as well too and a very matte finish instead of like that paper finish um, the Dollar Tree signs have. And then I also went on and kind of distressed the sides with a little bit of ivory to make it look a little bit more coastal farmhouse. Now to decorate it, I thought we could add some seashells and starfish and stuff like that to add a little coastal touch to these just by decorating the little shamrocks that were already on there. And so I just picked out like a variety of different tiny seashells. These are the ones that come in the little glass bottles from the Dollar Tree and the little tiny starfish that I get on Amazon. And we've got the like distressed boards, we've got the seashells, so I think that makes it look really fun and coastal. Now, it didn't really want to stand up too well, though. It's kind of lightweight being a Dollar Tree sign. I just glued some of their Jenga blocks into the base in the back where you can't see them to kind of weigh the bottom down so it's not so tippy because mine's going to be on my kitchen table and I don't want it falling over. Now, the next find was from the Target Dollar Spot again for a dollar. And this is like a little rainbow and pot of gold sign. I think they had something really similar this year. And I've also seen something really similar at Dollar Tree as well, but it's just a standard kind of rainbow. It does have like gold glitter going on for the pot of gold. So I just went over mine with some matte Mod Podge. Again, just toning down that glitter. The glitter doesn't really scream coastal. <laughs> and then I distress it ever so lightly with a little bit of ivory paint. And then for my gold, we're gonna do seashells again. So this time kind of a mini version using these little seashells from the Dollar Tree. I thought these were kind of shaped like kind of like coins a little bit. Um, and they're a little bit rounder than some of the other ones. So I'm trying to find out, find like the tiniest ones I can find that I can do a little coastal pot of gold again. And I'm just going to glue my seashells. I'm gonna do like three here on the bottom and then two on top to kind of round it out with some little seashells. 
So a uh, very cute. I was trying to decide if I should paint them gold or not. And then I was like, you know what? I probably should. So once I got them attached, I just went in there with my gold metallic acrylic and a little tiny brush. And I just kind of distressed them. They were already kind of brown, goldish color. But this gave them a little bit more of a metallic shine for another little coastal pot of gold sign. Now, this sign was also from the Target Dollar Spot. Um, it's a pretty basic sign, though. You could probably recreate this really easily with any of the little wooden shamrocks from the Dollar Tree. And it's just a little chunky shamrock of, like, the green, white, and orange. I was trying to get this tag off the back, and as you can see, I was struggling. I probably should have just started with some Goo Gone because it was not going well for me. <laughs> But eventually I it did get it off and it's okay that I roughed it up because I'm just going to distress it anyway. Um, a little bit more of that coastal farmhouse vibe and I distressed the other side as well. As you can see it's just green, white, and orange and I'm going to make mine coastal by attaching a starfish. I actually get these real starfish on Amazon. They are linked in my shop as well but it's about the same size as the Dollar Tree starfish that you can get in the shore living line. And I just glued that straight to the shamrock to make it coastal. And it's really fun. A little green, white, and orange shamrock with a starfish on front. And I know the Target Dollar Spot pieces that I use for this tear tray are not necessarily available. But hopefully you can still get some great crafting inspiration from this theme of tear tray. Now I'm going to make a couple more super easy little signs. I kind of want to do a little sign for each side since you're going to be able to see Kind of all four sides of the tear tray so i had this little sign that i got on clearance again at target dollar spot a father's day sign and i just cut down some cardstock the same size of it and glued that on and this is another little like father's day sign that i had used for a winter tear tray and i'm just going to start over with a blank canvas on that by repainting the little chunky sign with some ivory to go over like my blue frosty sign. Now for a little leprechaun, I picked up one of these little headbands from the Dollar Tree with these cute little leprechauns like sticking up top. And I'm just using my heat gun to kind of melt the glue on that so I can just have a cute little leprechaun to make a little leprechaun a sign with. Again, he is covered in glitter, so I'm going over the whole thing with some matte Mod Podge just to kind of tone him down. Again, a little bit, take away a little bit of the shininess, but if you like that vibe, you can totally leave him as is. He's pretty cute. And I'm just going to glue him to the sign I painted ivory for a very easy little St. Patrick's Day sign. But again, on that kind of coastal ivory vibe sign that we have there on the back. For the second one, I'm going to use headband again from the Dollar Tree. And this one has the little, just the leprechaun hat. So that's another version you can do. Again, it's covered in glitter as most things from Dollar Tree like to be. So I just toned it down again with some matte Mod Podge. And we could do a simple little leprechaun hat that we can do for the other side that we're going to be decorating here. So once I had it toned down, I was happier with it. I am going to hot glue this to that cardstock I put on the back of that sign. That was so easy, I didn't even have to paint it. So we're gonna turn this around and let me show you, I'm making these for the sides. Um, Cause you're gonna be able to see it from the sides as well since it's gonna be on the center of my table. So I put that one there and then I'll put the other one on the other side in just a minute. Now for the next DIY, I found this great light up rainbow at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. And I thought we could do a fun little kind of coastal version of a light up rainbow. And they have several different options of these. I know these are still available from um, Dollar Tree. And I'm gonna do just a very simple rainbow. I'm not gonna do all the colors um, because I kind of have three stripes here. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to do less colors. So I'm just doing this candy apple red color for the first row of my rainbow. And then this color is called goldenrod. As you can see, it's kind of like a mustard yellow color. So that's going to kind of represent my orange and yellow layers there. And then for the blue, I'm doing 
just a very soft like Caribbean blue color here for the center and so it's kind of a tame rainbow if you wanted to do like five or six colors you totally could but I was trying not to go super colorful since I was going with a coastal theme then for the clouds I just painted mine ivory to go with the ivory theme that we've been using for the coastal vibe on this and I don't really care about defining between the rainbow and the clouds because I'm going to distress all of it anyway, just like that. The great thing about this is that it lights up, which makes it super fun for a tear tray as well. And we're going to do our little coastal rainbow over here on the other side. It's a nice size piece for a tear tray. And I think it will look good right about here. Now for the next piece, I like to use these little puzzles from the toy aisle at the Dollar Tree because they have these great wooden shapes in them. But I also like to use the sign itself because um, it makes a nice size wood tray if you use the back of it. Now since I wanted to do kind of a coastal sign, I'm using one of these little spring bags from the Dollar Tree because I think they kind of look like seagrass and I really like that texture. So I'm just cutting off one side of the bag and it's large enough to cover this to make a really cute little coastal St. Patrick's Day sign for the tear tray. Now I don't want all this open shapes and stuff on the back of it. So to cover that up, I'm just using some of the cheap contact paper from the Dollar Tree. This one looks like wood, but you know, it doesn't really matter. And I just cut a piece a little bit larger than what I need. And then you can just go in there with a sanding block and get a perfect cut all the way around. It's going to mask you know, all those openings and stuff on the back and just leave me with a plain wood sign that's a perfect size for a tear tray. And it's a great wood too if you wanted to stain it. Now I'm covering mine again with the little spring bag and it's kind of heavy duty. So I do a thick coat of Mod Podge on the sign so it'll be strong enough to hold on to this kind of like seagrass vibe material. And I just lay that flat on top. I think the purse works better for the signs because it's already flat like this. But it's the same material that the spring hats are made out of. And then once I get it glued on, I'm just going to trim off the excess material all the way around the edges. And it gives me just a fun seagrass, um, you know, kind of background that I can decorate. I went over the top of mine with more Matte Mod Podge just to make sure it stays stuck on there. I guess you could use um, hot glue if you wanted as well, but that turned out really nicely. Now for a shamrock, I got these little foam glitter shamrocks at Dollar Tree and I'm going to flip it over where like glitter side down and light green side up and I just hot glue that on to that material that we added to the sign. And I like this light green color for the coastal touch. And then again, a little Amazon starfish for the top, but you could totally use a Dollar Tree starfish as well to make it kind of fun and coastal. And I love how this turned out. Since I have the pole there in the center, I can kind of just lean it up against that and it'll stand up on its own. And that's one of my favorite pieces from this tear tray today. This was another Target dollar spot find for $3 and it's just like a little shamrock vase but the color was really nice it's kind of like a lighter green color and I always like adding a greenery to a tear tray if I can I found this little greenery pot at Dollar Tree and I thought it would be perfect it's in burlap which is kind of coastal right so I just set that right inside the shamrock so easy and to kind of fill it up a little bit, I did use a little bit of reindeer moss, a little greenery just to fill the pot up to make it look not so empty. And I think that will look really nice on there. Now, again, I do want to do a little bit of a coastal touch. So I thought a seashell would be really fun. So I'm going through my seashell stash from the beach and I really like this one. I'm just going to hot glue the seashell to my shamrock to give me a little bit more of a coastal touch on this one. And just make sure you use enough hot glue, but hot glue should totally work if you want to add a seashell to something ceramic like this. I kind of did mine in an angle like that just because the shamrock was kind of in an angle, but easy peasy, we have a little greenery, 
little seashell and that's going to fill out this side of the tear tray nicely. Now I did make that other little mini St. Patrick's Day sign that we're going to use here on the other side. Just trying to make sure the wood beads fit fine and I had the little tassel kind of peeking out. And this is the only side we have left. And again, we had already made that sign, the little leprechaun hat. So we're going to put that right there. Super fun. Let me show you around this coastal version of the St. Patrick's Day tear tray. But again, don't go anywhere. We still have another St. Patrick's Day tear tray coming right up. So fun. I absolutely love that theme. Of course, coastal is going to be my favorite theme. For the next tear tray, the theme is a leprechaun lair, where I'm going to attempt to make my large three tear tray look like a leprechaun, like a leprechaun gnome. So I found some of this orange hair extensions in the toy aisle at Dollar Tree. It's actually a headband like this. And I thought, ah, oh, that would make a perfect leprechaun gnome beard. So it's a little too long, so I'm gonna give it a quick haircut here by cutting off some of the extra. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove it from the package. And we're gonna use the headband. At first I was going to use what I cut off, but I thought it'd be actually just easier just to leave it on the headband like that. And this is gonna be our cute little leprechaun and gnome beard for my tear tray, which I'm gonna attempt to decorate my top tier of my three tier um, metal tear tray like this and make the top of it look like a leprechaun gnome. I thought that'd be a really fun creative idea. So it fits on there. It's a little tight, but I'm going to use just a little hot glue to help hold it into place. So I do a little hot glue on each side and one in the middle, and then I just slipped the headband right on here. And we're actually going to cover the very top of my three tier tray with one of the little St. Patrick's Day hats for the top. So that's going to be our little leprechaun hat. And this is going to be the little leprechaun beard kind of coming down and covering part of the second tier as well. Now, this is a St. Patrick's Day hat that I found at Dollar Tree. It's green and felt. It's already got the black stripe and the gold buckle. All I had to do was lay that on my top tier. Then to make it look like a gnome, I thought we would just add the little nose. That way we don't have to do eyes or anything like that. I guess it would be a gonk. And I had a large plain wooden bead. And so I'm going to kind of like try to find the center of my be beard like that. Kind of pull it to the side and just hot glue the little wood bead in place for a little nose. And I really wasn't sure if this was going to work. But it totally did, and it made the tear tray look like a little leprechaun gnome. Super fun idea if you want to do like a whimsical tear tray and you have like multiple tiers. Again, this is my galvanized metal three tear tray that I got at Target. And so this is how my top tier turned out. I think it's really fun. Now we just have to decorate the other two tiers. And I want to stay with that same fun whimsical St. Patrick's Day theme, just kind of classic stuff like that. But I think that little orange, I guess, hair extensions worked great for a little leprechaun beard. Now these are just the little 
um, plastic pots from the Dollar Tree, the little black pots they have for their St. Patrick's Day stuff. I picked these up and some gold coins. And we're just going to do classic St. Patrick's Day with this by making little pots of gold. So I'm going to just open up a package of the gold coins and we can just fill some of the pots up. Um, if you don't want to fill them up all the way, um, it's going to probably take all of your gold coins. You can always fill them up with something. I had a little polyfill handy. You could also like wad up like a piece of newspaper or something like that. Just so you don't have to use quite so many. And then you can make little pots of gold. I'm going to do a couple of them for wherever I kind of need it. Like a little pot of gold on this fun, whimsical little leprechaun themed tear tray. And they don't have a lot of supplies at Dollar Tree, but you can usually find these little pots of gold. I thought I might as well go ahead and do a third one just in case I needed it. These are a nice small size. It's a large tear tray and I can kind of work these in wherever I might need one. Super easy, you don't have to do much to them. You could do a smaller gold coin if you wanted, but using the ones that are already made like that from the Dollar Tree makes it even easier. I'm gonna do a pot of gold over here. And that you can really see that like gold sheen and then we'll scatter them about. Now the next find was actually from the bath aisle at Dollar Tree. It's just a little bath sponge that looks like a rainbow. If you can't find this one, they also have a little rainbow like squishy toy that I just found recently at the Target Dollar Spot toy aisle. But I've seen these little um, sponges quite a bit and I think they're a fun little touch. Nobody would really know they're like a bath sponge. You're going to get that like rainbow kind of theme and all you have to do is just cut off the hanger on the top and it's ready to go. It's not necessarily traditional colors, but it's pretty close with the pink at the very top. And I'm going to kind of have mine, since it's so lightweight, kind of sticking out in an angle like that for fun to kind of do like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow kind of theme. Now the next DIY, I just picked up one of these chunky wood signs from the Dollar Tree and one of the little St. Patrick's Day headbands. This one's got like a rainbow with a pot of gold on the end. And I thought this would be the perfect size to make a little sign for the tear tray. Now I do want it to be green for St. Patrick's Day. So I'm using this color. It is the Christmas green acrylic. And we're just going to paint the Dollar Tree sign green. Of course for St. Patrick's Day. You can't have too much green. This is one of, you know, the chunky like plaque signs. So it's kind of got like the decorative molding on the side. But any sign would work for this. I'm just going to paint this and then attach the cute little rainbow uh, that's on the headband to the front of it for a quick easy DIY. The only hard part is probably getting it off of the little springs here without damaging it. I just used a little bit of heat to like soften up the glue and we're going to add that to the front of the sign. I want it to stand up though, so I am going to attach a little Jenga block from five below to the back to make a little standing sign. Quick, easy DIY. I went ahead and painted the back of mine green just because I got green on it anyway. And on a tear tray, sometimes you need things to look a little bit better from the back. But we're going to put this here, another version of the rainbow, on that shelf for St. Patrick's Day. So this one's definitely going to have a mixture of the greens and the rainbows and traditional St. Patrick's Day stuff. Now for the next DIY, this is just a Target Dollar Spot sign. I like to pick these up after the season on clearance. You can get a really good deal. And I love the little chunky wood signs because they stand up really well and they're just the right size for tear trays. I'm actually going to use the back of this and one of the little foam glitter shamrocks from the Dollar Tree in the traditional green glitter and attach that to the sign. Couldn't be any easier. All I have to do is attach it. Um, the foam does kind of melt a little bit with hot glue, so I'm only gonna use just a tiny bit, just enough to attach it and glue that right onto the white back. I don't really have to do anything else. And we have a cute little shamrock sign. I did kind of rough up the edges a little bit just because 
Um, I wanted to give it a little bit of a texture there on the edges, but otherwise super easy to do. And I think that's gonna look really cute right here, right underneath our little leprechaun beard. And I have a little bit of room left here in the front, so I thought another one of the pot of golds that we made would finish off that tier nicely. Now for the bottom tier, I have a little bit more room down there, and so I'm going to make a cute little rainbow sign for St. Patrick's Day. They have some really cute rainbow things at Dollar Tree. I just picked up this little green picture because I really liked the frame, and I thought it would be a really quick, easy transition to make this a St. Patrick's Day DIY. This kind of has like paper like attached to the back of it. I don't know if it's better to try to pull it off or just to go over it because it's really hard to kind of remove. I'm gonna replace it with just a plain background by just using some plain white cardstock and laying my picture right on top. I can kind of sketch out the size I need with an ink pen. Anytime I don't have to measure, I try not to measure <laughs> and simply cut that out. That's gonna give us that cute green frame with the white background and we can attach one of the puffy rainbow stickers from Dollar Tree to the front for another super easy a rainbow themed sign from the Dollar Tree. Now to attach it to the back of the sign, I just do a layer of Mod Podge and lay the cardstock on top. It's quick, it's easy. You're gonna get a plain white background without having to deal with the ripped paper or trying to paint it or anything like that. And they not only have these like puffy stickers, they also have like iron-ons, um, kind of like fabric rainbows. I found so many rainbows at Dollar Tree. Um, but this was a nice, fun puppy sticker. So we're gonna peel that off the background and it's just as simple as peel and stick, especially since we're just attaching it to cardstock. So I'm gonna make sure I have it going the right direction and center it on there and just stick it to the sign. Now all we have to do is put this back together by popping that in the green frame and couldn't be any easier. So this is a nice size here for the bottom where I have a little bit more height that I can work with. We're gonna put this right over here on the bottom. And I love all the rainbows we're adding to this leprechaun tear tray, really fun DIY to make. Now for the next one, I thought we would do a little like a floral arrangement with those like little glitter styrofoam shamrocks. And so to display them, I thought one of the little green metal buckets from Dollar Tree would be cute. And to make it look festive for St. Patrick's Day, we're gonna use window decals from the Dollar Tree. I got a gold horseshoe. I thought that'd be really cute on the front of the green. So you could always just find, you know, a color that you like on these little metal buckets at Dollar Tree. And you can kind of make them whatever you want for whatever holiday. The little green foam circle discs from Dollar Tree work perfect for these little tin buckets. They fit perfectly right inside with a little bit of a ledge. And then these are the glitter green shamrocks, super sparkly and fun for St. Patrick's Day. And I'm gonna kind of do a little bit shorter. I wanted them to be able to fit in the tear tray. So I kind of took them to the side to kind of measure them to make sure that's gonna fit since I do have a top tier above it that I have to fit everything under. But I wanted to do a fun little floral arrangement with just the glitter shamrocks. I thought that would be really cute. So I th thought I would use all six of them. It's got the green foam. The green foam like already kind of goes with St. Patrick's Day. So I don't really have to change it like I normally do. And we're gonna put that right over here to the side of our little rainbow sign. Super festive, bright and sparkly for St. Patrick's Day. Now this is a fun, funny story because I picked up this sign at Dollar Tree and I didn't notice anything was wrong with it. I did attach a wood block to the back of it because I thought it wouldn't tip over. So this is just a five below Jenga block and I glued that to the back. The funny thing is, is after I got on this tear tray all together, I did realize that Dollar Tree spelled Patrick wrong 
it's missing a C in there, but it is a cute little sign. And so I went ahead and put this right in front, even though they can't spell St. Patrick's Day. Hopefully they fixed that typo on these little signs by now. I have another little pot of gold I can use as a filler right over here to the next to the side of it. And then I also picked up some of the sparkly foam scatter from the St. Patrick's Day section at Dollar Tree. These are like little puffy glitter shamrocks and puffy glitter gold coins. So super cute items that you can use for a filler on your tear tray. If you're doing a more traditional St. Patrick's Day, super sparkly, a fun theme. I really kind of liked the coins. They're definitely a different feel than the skinny plastic coins. And so I'm going to put a couple here in front of my little misspelled pot of gold. And then those just work as great filler pieces, the little shamrocks as well. And we're just going to kind of fill up any space that kind of needs something with those. And that's all there is to it, to this really fun like leprechaun and gnome theme for a St. Patrick's Day for a tear tray. This is a really fun one to put together. Let me give you a little look around and then I'll be right back with the final reveal of all five of the St. Patrick's Day tear trays that we did today. And you can choose which one's your favorite. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I had a really great time showing you all five of these ideas for different themes you could do for your St. Patrick's Day tear tray. You'll have to let me know in the comments below which one's your favorite, which one you would like to try. And I know you guys have really been wanting St. Patrick's Day tear tray ideas. So hopefully this gave you lots of crafting inspiration. Don't forget to like today's video, comment below, and please subscribe. Enjoy the final reveal. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. Nothing can ruin my date. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet. I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. what it's like to be broke i know what it's like when nothing goes your way so i'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day yeah i am on my way up i won't slow down yeah i am on my way up i won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm going to rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. I know what it's like to be broke, yeah I know what it's 
like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down <laughs> Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down to be broken and I know what it's like when nothing goes your way so I'm just gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down cause I am on my way up. I won't slow I am on my way uh, 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 uh. I won't slow down I am on my way uh, uh, uh. I won't slow down mm. I'm walking down the street On clouds instead of the concrete I'm dancing through Everything's about to come my way Nothing can ruin my date No matter what anyone does or say I smile at fools No, I don't care cause I am on my way Up and I won't stop I won't slow down Steady on my feet I'm gonna rise Up, no I won't stop It is my time mm. Cause I know what it's like to be broke know what it's like when nothing goes your way so i'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day yeah i am on my way up i won't slow down yeah i am on my way up i won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. <laughs> yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. to be broken and I know what it's like when nothing goes your way so I'm just gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down cause I am on my way up. I won't slow I am on my way uh, 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 uh. I won't slow down I am on my way uh, uh, uh. I won't slow down mm. I'm walking down the street on clouds instead of the concrete I'm dancing through Everything's about 
smile to come my way. Nothing can ruin my day. No matter what anyone does or say, I smile at fools. No, I don't care because I am on my way up and I won't stop. I won't slow down. Steady on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. Because I know what it's like to be broke. What it's like when nothing goes your way So I'm gonna let myself enjoy The fruit from this lucky day Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down Yeah, I am on my way up I won't slow down I'm strolling down the street with all of my favorite songs on repeat. I'm dancing through. Everything's about to come my way. And I don't care if you spill coffee on me or if the sky is gray or blue. No, I don't care because I am on my way up. And I won't stop. I won't slow down. Standing on my feet, I'm gonna rise up. No, I won't stop. It is my time. I know what it's like to be broke, yeah. I know what it's like when nothing goes your way. So I'm gonna let myself enjoy the fruit from this lucky day. Yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. <laughs> yeah, I am on my way up. I won't slow down. Thank you so much for joining me today. I also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to all of my Crafty Beach Bum members for supporting my channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much to Karen O'Haran, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Nancy Wunner, Julie Miller, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Pamelia Wren, Maria Grace, Donna Schreiner, Sandy C., and Iris Cornelius. Thank you so much for supporting my channel here on YouTube. I appreciate you each so much. If you'd like to join, all you have to do is hit the join button under today's video. And if you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach DIYs, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone.